Hi, Michael here with CR Kennedy in Phase 1. Today I got the chance to sit down with Melbourne-based commercial and fine art photographer Andrew Vukasav to talk about how he's using his Phase 1 system both in his commercial work and also in his amazing show Longitude, Latitude, Solitude and I can't wait to show you some of the images. Hope you enjoy it. Andy, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Tell our viewers yeah. a little bit about, uh, about well, yourself. I've been a uh, commercial photographer for 30 plus years, uh, shooting advertising and fashion. Uh, for a long time I've been flying an aircraft for, you know, around the place and four years ago I, I found a way to actually mount a, uh, a camera into the plane, phase one camera into the plane, and uh, I started this personal project that um, it turned into quite a large body of work, so, mm. it, uh, so I started exhibiting it and showing it and mm. whatever. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's quickly have a quick look at the, the plane or the camera, as we call it. You fly this camera. Yeah. Um, so this is, your, this is your beast. So this is, this is Valerie. Um, Valerie. Valerie's her name, and, uh, and she's a beautiful little plane. She's a Cessna 182 retractable, mm -hmm. um, so she's pretty quick. And uh, the camera's mounted, hard mounted into the actual plane around where the, the V is on the, you can on see the tail on the there. screen, on the yeah. tail. Yeah. So right under the fuselage and it points straight down. So I've had, oh. this, uh, had this engineer make a, create a mount that mm -hmm. goes through an existing um, inspection hole. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to modify the plane at all, right. just this mount goes straight in there and then the camera clicks straight yeah, into that. just pops yeah, into that. Pops into that yeah. with a little rail and... Off it goes. It took a little bit of doing to try and get it exactly flat, flat for when yeah. you know when we were at cruising speed. Yeah. Because um, yeah. you know it was kind of a little bit of an angle, but I just wanted a plan view on the mm -hmm. on the on the world. So you said you've created this body of work. It's been a project for a long time, and that turned into the show Longitude, Latitude, and Solitude. That's correct. That's yes. what it's called. Yes. Um, which I think you first exhibited in Melbourne in 2018. That's right. Um, yes. Amazing show. I remember going to the opening night. And well, just being it was yeah. Blown away. It was an exhibition I did at uh, Essendon Airport, and my plane was the centre. That's right. Yeah. The, you, uh, you had show. The, you had some hospitality people. That's that right. The flight crew. We're all yeah. dressed up as flight crews. Yeah. You went all in so on, we the, had, on the we had, we had <laughs> Valerie was there. Great looking boys. Beautiful looking girls. Yeah. We had eye candy for everybody. We had beautiful pictures. And the images were just were stunning. That's so, exactly right. So. Yes. Thank you. So we'll, we'll start off maybe having a look at, uh, at our first image here. So this is. Um, we, we should say you've flown all over Australia. Yes, uh, I've flown top to bottom, side to side, everywhere in between. Yes, absolutely. Um, and you're constantly shooting and, and finding interesting subject matter. It's a, as you'll see, as the viewers will see through this, there's such a, a diverse range of landscape in Australia. That's right. And colours particularly. Um, and, and this is one that is a little more muted, but um, when you see it in print particularly, the subtleties that come through. But what, what are we actually looking at here? Well, this, this one actually really makes me smile. When I, when I saw this, I see a lot of these things. This is, this is actually... a image of uh, animal tracks you know, in Lake Eyre, as it turns out. Wow. And uh, I often see animal tracks in, in salt lakes because they've sort of, you know, it's the, the, the crust of salt is a little bit soft and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this one's particularly good because you can see them, you know, sort of coming out and they go a fair way out and then they go, oh, oh I better come back there. Far, better yeah. come back. Yeah. But they see that nam another animal's been there before. So they get to a certain point and they go, okay, somebody's been here before, it's safe, let's do a U-turn. Yeah, almost like ants. And, yes, in exactly. But then there's one, you can see, there's little tracks just coming out of the shot on the right-hand side. And there's one... One trailblazer. Pioneer <laughs> yeah. of an animal, which is, which is quite amazing that there's only one. You know, you have these, these other ones coming in and out and whatever. So wow. it's just, uh, we're, we're all like animals, I guess. I suppose we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I remember seeing this shot, this shot um, at the 2018 exhibition, and, and we should say that these, these are printed at a very large size, very large format printing. Are, yeah. what, what are we talking about in terms of long edge printing? Well, the, the, uh, the, the, the prints are all about two and a half metres wide and by, and a half, by yeah. one and a half. Yeah. Um, I printed them roughly at that, uh, that um, proportion, mm. because that's the, that's the divine proportion. So it's kind mm. of mm. something to do with nature as well. And even though the, uh, the sensor is not that size, I often get these images and I stitch a few together because when I'm shooting them, um, as I'll probably explain later, I do kind of like a bombing run. I sort of set up the shot, I see it out my window. You have a line almost yeah. that you fly. Yep. And then I fly over it and do a series of shots and yeah. then I yeah. take that bit and put them together and then crop out the, yeah. the bit that I like. You don't like, yeah. 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 So we should talk about the, the camera a little bit too. So you're using the Phase 1 XF with an IQ4 150 megapixel yes. digital back. Yes. So the current latest and greatest and it's that Phase 1 makes. Absolutely fantastic, yeah. So I've been using that camera on uh, for my commercial work 
for a, a little while now. You're and in quite a long time phase one shooter as well. I oh think yeah, I've been you. since yeah. the what, which was the first one I got a P series to draw yeah, back. P45 probably P45 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, with with my commercial work, this um, the XF camera yeah. has been a, a absolute you know game changer because it's just such a fantastic um, piece of machinery yeah. to be able to shoot with. You do a, quite a bit of specialised sort of product uh, based work as well, I think, don't you? Where you, yeah. you get some unique benefit out well, of the XF. Not so much even product work. This it could be it could be talent stuff as well. Okay. But it's yeah. uh, you know I've got a particular client that um, requires lots of photos, that, um, you know, image uh, focus stacking focus for stack, their yeah. uh, for their, their their shots, and also you know panoramic sort of stacking. So yeah. Yeah, um, we do a lot of that. With, so you with get that camera. flexibility Monday to Friday, and then you jump in the plane. That's or right. Maybe, put maybe you take a Friday off and, yeah. and jump on the plane and, exactly right. and head out for you for the sort of the relief uh, from yeah. the well, stress to, of the commercial world. Well, to, to, to feed my my creativity. You exactly. Know? So yeah. this has been an absolutely fantastic job because it's it's actually made me more passionate about my commercial work now. I'm yeah. Doing this because yeah. I've got this this fantastic creative release. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's um, funny you say I. I can think of another um, photographer I know who's a phase one shooter and uh, I remember much like yourself they kind of um, came to us and were showing us the initial images as they as they built a show and built an idea um, and they were really unsure if that was going to be the right thing to do and how's it going to be perceived by their commercial clients but um, ultimately it actually for, for, for him it fed into his commercial work as well mm -hmm. and his clients started being inspired by his art yes and that helped him bring that into his commercial work as well fantastic so yeah i think there's a lot to be said for pursuing those needs and desires outside of the commercial yeah. realm and i guess having something that's so flexible makes that makes that really but really easy you know it's also an exciting time to be a photographer um because you have um you know this this camera is forever improving itself that's as right well. yeah um you know they have the um the infinity platform now which you know, you get a new bit of firmware, firmware. And, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, I can do There's this There's a new now. tool this or a new, yeah. A new toy, yeah. you know, and, and so it's fabulous. Of course, for yourself, someone like yourself is so creative. There's, I guess they, they do that because they know that's going to unlock something new. Um, that even potentially the developers or, or we as the, as the representatives of the product don't really fully know how it's going to be utilized. Exactly yet. right. And but then, that's what that's what makes it so yeah. magical is to see and what you guys And necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. You know? So you have these new tools and you go, now I can do this yeah. this way, you know. So you know, or or it, or it creates something by accident that you might find, That's you know. Right. So it's it's quite well. Lovely. You're right talking about that platform. I mean, um, I'm told re fairly reliably that there are even um, more things inside to be unlocked as as development happens and mm -hmm. as feedback from people like yourself comes back through to phase one. So yeah, it's exciting. You're right. I think um, resolution, of course, being 150 megapixels, that's one thing, but. The platform is the thing that excites. It's amazing, people, yeah. The fact that there's so much flexibility. There, yeah. So and it's nice to see the the technicians at Phase One are so committed to doing what they're doing. Oh, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's absolutely love it. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing they love. Mm. So we'll, we'll bring up another image now to talk about. Um, <coughs> I remember again. I mean, all of your images floored me when I saw them, but um, there were some in particular. Uh, this was one of them that really uh, blew me away. Well, this one's pretty interesting. This is shot up in the uh, up in the Kimberley um, inland a little bit. It's a, it's an area called Jurak, and it's uh, just uh, west of Lake Argyle. Um, and it's this range of mountain called the uh, the Rugged Range, as it as it, as it looks. Out, yeah. It looks pretty rugged. But uh, what's interesting about this one is the is the trees are kind of imperceptible apart from the shadows of the trees. So when you look at this kind of close up, you don't see the trees so much. You see the shadows, mm. and so that talks about trees, but then you've got these these rivers that appear to to uh, to be on the ridges of the, yeah. of, the of the hills, yeah. and that's because um, of a of a optical you know effect that um, because the picture is actually upside down. So if you turn it over, Amazing. the rivers actually look like they they should be running in the, the right yeah, way. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's it's kind of groovy. I've, I've made this as a as a uh, I guess and it's it's actually called. Um, this one's called a tribute to Izzy Miyake mm -hmm. because of, you know, he designs stuff with lots of wrinkles and I just absolutely love it. I yeah, think it's, yeah. it's fantastic. And, and so again, it shows that diversity of the landscape you, you're sort of flying across. Yeah. And the colours, I imagine that's one of the things that must strike you um, when, the, you're up, when you're up in the air is seeing the, you know, everything from the deepest reds right through those really that's intense right. blues and greens. and The colours of Australia are just incredible yeah. and the the landscapes and what it, what she has to show is yeah. just mind-blowing yeah. it's really fantastic yeah, yeah. and you, it, i guess with 
with the phase, you're bringing the, the files either capture one, you're working them up, you, you know, it, some people I know when they're, um, when they're editing their files, it's, it's more about intensifying those colors to almost something that's not as real or yeah. hyper real, but I know other people like to so tone that down a little bit. What, how do you sort of work well, with your Well, I just colors? think that I don't want to misrepresent, you mm. know, our beautiful landscape. Mm. So I try to uh, make it as true to life as possible. Yes. Yeah. Um, sometimes when I have something that could be a bit of a challenge with, uh, with when, I'm, when I'm trying to remember what the colors were like, mm. um, I have the camera outputting JPEGs as it's shooting as well. So uh, that reminds me of, you know, has gives a, you a file, visual reference, a reference yeah. of, of yeah. how it is. And then when I, when I render them out, I try to just keep it pretty normal, yes. you know, yeah. because it's, yeah. it well, is, that's a great point you, yeah. you mentioned, I guess, with the IQ4, the fact that we can produce both a raw file and a JPEG at that's the same right, time. Yeah. Um, it, that's a, I guess that's probably one of the reasons you were talking about the engineers probably didn't even realize that would be one of the reasons that's that, right, uh, yeah. you know, someone would be flying along and needing to remember a shot they took. Mm. So, I mean, how, how are you, weeks is it sort of you go for a flight and then come back and it can be weeks before you're editing or you try and get no, it done no, as edit. you're going I edit while I'm going you of get, course yeah because yeah. that's that's how you remember it, that's the best like. yeah that's and the best that's kind of exciting you look at it at the time and edit what you've got and you go oh this is great if you've or, got something here yeah, yeah if you miss it you go back out yeah. um if you know you have too many clouds on the day sometimes that can be really good sometimes mm. not mm. because it's sort of blobs all over the uh, images but, yeah. but it's, it's nice having clouds when you're you know fully clouded it looks like it's been shot in a studio so there's some images that actually have this kind of spooky light on them yeah because it's all kind of you know diffused amazing mm. amazing we'll move on to another image here so this is a, a, a set of lakes or something this is a yeah this is a series of lakes in in south western wa uh where there's just the it's, the, it's another most exciting part of Australia. Yeah. Because it always has these bizarre looking lakes, you know, and these funny river systems. Yeah. Um, and you've got little farms in between them. So, uh, you know, they're just, just incredible. So this one just, you know, it's, it's just sort of really beautiful. The colours in it um, are, are really something quite exciting. And I, I love that whole area. But what I found, because I tried to do that area in, in a space of two days, and it's massive. It's probably yeah. the size of New South Wales. Wow. So okay. it's amazing. Uh, yeah. Amazing. So the show in Paris, was that the first time you've exhibited overseas? Yes, that's yeah. my first exhibition overseas. I approached the, uh, the embassy at Paris uh, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, How's that process been? Well, it was, it was interesting. I heard nothing back from them for a long time. And then uh, another year went by and... So I sent him another little uh, little reminder and a, mm. and, a, and, a, and a bit of a pitch pack, you know. Mm. So uh, then they got back to me um, about three months before the show and they said it's, it's, it's actually, on. It's on and oh. it's confirmed <laughs> and we want it to, to open on the 28th of January. So it was like, okay, Andy, pull your finger out and make this happen. <laughs> so I printed 25 massive prints, put them all in crates. Oh. I uh, had this fantastic art courier sent him over for me, mm. um, printed a beautiful book, and uh, and it was great. So, yeah, yeah it all happened. It all went together without a hitch. Fantastic. Which is pretty lucky. And what um, what's the sort of, you said two and a half metres is the typical size before it, is there, a, have you ever gone bigger or can I, you go bigger? I or have. What's your, there's, there's, uh, what's one the largest in, dimension? there's one in particular I made for a client that wanted um, a print 3.8 metres long. Wow. Um, so we did that. That was one that I stitched together and it was 3.8 metres by about 2 metres. So wow. Wow. The, uh, the, the biggest um, challenge with that was actually getting it into his house, which was <laughs> a real issue. <laughs> yeah. Craned it in or so, something. No, no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't that heavy because it's no, all on no, canvas, yeah. but it was kind of like it fit through Just this wedging tiny it between. little gap. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, we were very lucky to be able to get it in there. That's something we didn't think about when we were actually planning it. Yeah. We said, oh, yeah, let's do a print this big. Yeah, no yeah. worries. Yeah. 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 So there you go. Cool. You mentioned earlier, I, I will bring this up to show too, because I think it's very interesting to see. Um, you talked about how you'll, you'll do a, a run or a line. As yes. You talked about, and this would well, give this, us an example. Yeah, this illustrates it really bit. well. So I've, I've actually put a little bit of vignette around the images here so that it, so that it illustrates it better. But you can see um, this kind of first hand where, see how the, the actual border of the image moves because of, you know, movements in the plane, a little bit of yeah. uh, turbulence yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Um, but... 
The way that I actually do it is pretty much because the camera is, is, is set up in the bottom of the plane, I have to maneuver the plane to, to get the shot. Mm. So I'm basically inside the camera pretty much. Yeah, you know? so, essentially, like you said, flying the camera. Yeah, and yeah. so this is what happens. I, I fly over an area and do a series of shots and then, um, and then stitch them together. Mm. Mm. Um, provided there's nothing moving in the shot, then it works perfectly. Yeah, yeah. and it, I guess at the sort of altitudes, even if there was a little bit of movement, um, you know, oceans and things I imagine would be harder, but oceans um, are tough, yeah. Yeah, the, the general landscape, you're not going to notice it. No. Um, too much. And how are you uh, viewing your images as you fly? Have you, have you got, what's your setup? Have you, are you well, tethered? Or? At, at the moment, when, well, I was initially using an um, IQ3 uh -huh. and I had the, the uh, I didn't actually have it tethered, I had it shooting shooting straight on board Cap the, capture on, pilot on the using camera, the, yep, the using previews. capture pilot to mm -hmm. see the previews. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem was because of the camera I was using at the time, I couldn't actually use live view. Mm. What's fantastic about the IQ4 is the live view and shooting straight out of live view, which yeah, is brilliant. Amazing. So the, because the camera is actually powered by the plane, mm -hmm. It can never run out of power, so the lot of light you can stay running. Stay no, running, no, no battery problem. issues, and it stays reasonably cool because I'm five to seven thousand feet in the air, so it's course, kind of course. not too bad because yeah. it does heat up when you've got the live view on for, for sure. Heat. Yeah, um, but the image quality doesn't seem to suffer even even at high temperatures yeah. on the back, which is fantastic. Mm. Uh, and then you know, at the moment, because um, Capture Pilot still doesn't work with the IQ4, which I'm hoping it will really Big soon. Fingers crossed, we'll have a solution there yeah. soon. Um, so what we'll do, what I do now is uh, the IQ4 has a, a HDMI output that I have going to a Mini HD in the plane, Perfect. Um, which is absolutely fantastic. So the live view works on that. I can see, you can it see all. where you're flying. It gives me, and, and what I discovered out of that, which was fantastic, right? This I never knew before. This was unbelievable. So when you've got the standard overlay on the HDMI, it gives you a, um, it gives you a, a raw um, uh, histogram. histogram. Yeah which is very different to a normal histogram. It is, yeah. It's and what the sensor's actually registering. Yeah. Not let me tell you, if you use that raw histogram to actually, if you stretch that out, yeah. you've got so much more image to play with and so Fantastic. many more in the shadows Fantastic. and the highlights and everything else. Yeah. It actually looks, it, it appears to overexpose a little bit, but you know, it tells you when you're clipping you know, exactly. the, the Your channels. channels. That's right. Um, and you can get nowhere near it, you know, yeah. and it's, it looks completely blown out, but yeah. then you get it back and it's like, Oh my god, I've got it's all, all this there. extra detail in the shadows yeah. and and, and where you've got really zero good. control really over I mean you can move the plane to try and work within the shadows of the light you've got, but really you don't have a lot of control over uh, over the light because you're just dealing with the, the sun. No, that's exactly so. right. And the, the, the great thing is is I can um, the, the, the way at the moment that I set my um, exposure is tether white via the Wi Fi to the yeah. iPad. Oh, to, yes. to the to the computer, to the computer. sorry. Yep. Um, and th that way I can change the shutter speeds and everything else. I see. And then yes. I just close the computer and, and, just and keep running Go along with just with your monitor. That's right. Yeah. Yes. You, you can, turn that off. You've got flexibility yeah. with the way it handles the files. So it just keeps all the files on board yep. and it's fabulous. So Amazing. once I set the exposure, it stays roughly the same because I'm shooting, you know, it's all fully lit. Yeah. yeah um, it changes a little bit from early morning to, you know, late afternoon, midday. Yeah. There's a few small adjustments that I have to make. But the lens is always set on infinity, mm -hmm. um, and from memory, it's about you know two hundred ASA at sixteen hundred per second at about f eight, yeah. um, and does the job. Beautiful, it's fabulous. Yeah. Well, it definitely does do the job. And mm -hmm. I, as I said, blown away. And when I first saw your images, and I know everyone that's seen the show has just been um, so yeah. impressed. And Thank it's you. something different. And um, yes, the Australian landscape has been captured a lot, but I, I love the perspective you're using and the the different way in which you're representing. Well, what I try and do is, you know, get out there and because I, there are a lot of drone shooters and I'm not taking anything away from yeah. them, they do beautiful yeah. images. Yeah. Um, but I try to go where no drone can go. That's right. Um, yeah. And find um, abstract landscapes that sort of that sort of kind of have some kind of form about them and, and that almost look kind of a little bit painterly. And this is this is another really fantastic that thing. That theme about, definitely comes through. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I kind of really love about the, the work. So you said um, next up potentially Berlin, potentially the Vatican. Potentially Berlin or the Vatican. The the, uh, the embassy at Paris was so wrapped with it because the ambassador in Paris is such a big uh, climate change and environmental Advocate. campaigner. Yep. He uh, he got an awful lot of press. He got right behind the show. Amazing. And then the 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 people I was dealing with there sent 
sent a little uh, notice to all the other embassies yep. and to said, yep. why don't you do this? This yeah. is fantastic. We had a bushfire appeal thing and made lots of money for them. And fantastic. that was absolutely brilliant. So, um, you know, the, and the message that I try to get out there with these images is that, you know, you, you should, you, you sort of, I see this, this world from a different kind of perspective and, you know, I look at it all and say how, how incredibly beautiful it is and how, how important it is to try and try and protect it, you know, to try and um, think sustainably and, and make something so that this, you know, this, this beauty, beautiful thing that we have, you know, can, can last for generations. Yeah, yeah. And also, I mean, it's our home, you know, if we screw it up, it's, it's gone. <laughs> there aren't any other options That's that are right. at this so, stage. Yeah. This is the kind of message I'm trying to get over here. So yeah. anyway, well, you're doing it in a pretty nice way. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it's it's very special. I think what I, what I'm doing. I mean, apart from absolutely loving what I'm doing and having this this huge you know um, um, creative release out of it, yeah. I think it's it's really important. It's an important message for people to look at and and think themselves about. Okay, look how fantastic this is. Let's try and live a little bit differently to try mm. and to try and um, preserve this. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that it's sustainable well, it's, for it's future, a beautiful future, way to, future generations. Beautiful way to remind people yeah. of, of the uniqueness of what we have. Mm, absolutely. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Well, Andy, thanks so much for coming in and, and, and sharing some of your experience and some of your images. Um, can't wait to see you do more of this and, and where it takes you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Yeah. All the best. Cheers.